Am I live? Yes. There you go. Good morning. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. My name is David Newman. I'm here to ask your help in keeping me from going to prison for exercising my constitutional right to free speech. I'm a Portland resident, a nurse practitioner, small business owner, and a member of Havara Shalom, a Jewish Reconstructionist congregation. I am speaking to you today as a private citizen. I am also a member of Jewish Voice for Peace and a supporter of the nonviolent boycott, divestment, and sanction movement. However, I am not here today to try to persuade you of the merits of BDS or to talk to you about the Israeli oppression of the Palestinians. We can leave those discussions for another day. What I am here to speak to you about is my constitutional right to participate in a boycott of Israel if I choose to do so. Boycotts are a form of collective action that allows ordinary people to make their voices heard. In this country, we have a long tradition of boycotts being used to affect progressive change. In the 1960s, they were used successfully in the civil rights movement to overturn Jim Crow laws and by the United Farm Workers to win concessions from growers. More recently, boycotts have been used to protest the states of Arizona and North Carolina when they passed laws targeting immigrants and transgender people. The right to boycott is a form of free speech protected by both the United States and the Oregon constitutions. The United States Supreme Court in the landmark 1982 case NAACP versus Claiborne Hardware affirmed that boycotts are a protected form of free speech. If the Israeli anti-boycott law becomes the law of the land, my right to participate in a boycott of Israel and my right to encourage others to participate in such a boycott will become illegal. Violators could face up to 20 years in prison. This is not just my opinion. It's the opinion of the ACLU and other civil rights experts who have carefully looked at the proposed legislation. If the Israel anti-boycott law becomes law, I and many other Portlanders could be arrested or, and prosecuted for merely exercising our right to free speech. This proposed law is meant to intimidate those who seek to, per pursue, to pressure Israel into doing the right thing. That is its sole purpose, intimidation. It would have a chilling effect on nonviolent forms of direct action. Many Portlanders support BDS. Faith leaders, PSU students, and many of our neighbors are currently boycotting the state of Israel and have encouraged, and have encouraged others to do so. I am sure none of you would want to see the spectacle of Portlanders prosecuted for exercising their First Amendment rights. That would be shameful and would make our city complicit in the undermining of our basic freedoms. As the voice of our city, I respectfully ask you to formalize your opposition to this appalling piece of legislation by passing a resolution condemning it. Thank you for considering this request. Thank you, David. And Maria, I think, wanted to speak next. Is that correct? Yes. Very good. Hello. My name is Maria Barahona, and I'm a member of Jewish Voice for Peace. I just want to clarify, I will not be speaking about the Bureau of Development Services. Mm -hmm. Six months ago, I visited Palestine and witnessed the catastrophic situation of the Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. As a result of this experience, I have become a supporter of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. I experienced the occupation through the many checkpoints where Palestinians <coughs> stood in line for hours as part of their daily routine, through the separation wall and road blockades that divided communities, families, workers, and even our team. Perhaps what most impacted me was my visit to the Nasser family farm, roughly about 100 acres, six miles southwest of Bethlehem. In 1991, the Israeli government declared the surrounding area, including the Nasser's portion, as Israeli state land. The Nasser family has all the original land registration papers from 1916 and has cultivated and re-registered the land through the Ottoman, British, Jordanian, and even Israeli governance clearly demonstrating that the Israeli government has no right to declare it theirs. The family has been fighting a legal battle to keep hold of this land, accruing many legal expenses, continuing to pay taxes on their farm, and still being punished at the same time. On May 14, 2014, at 4 a.m., bulldozers arrived and destroyed the entire orchard of fruit trees and grapevines. By the time the Nasser started working in the fields at 8 a.m., the trees were all gone. But the Nassers were resilient and continued. Since then, they have created an environmental peace center on their farm called Tent of Nations. They provide children's summer camps, a women's empowerment project, and offer volunteer op opportunities to internationals. What's most impressive about the Nasser family is their resiliency. They have become a fully operating, self-sustainable farm, 
mostly because they had no choice. Since the family cannot get permits for running water, they built 15 cisterns enough to hold 200,000 gallons of water during a good rainy season, which is sufficient for the year. Since the family cannot get permits for electricity, they had a German engineer who was volunteering help them install solar panels. And when you first enter their farm, the first thing you see is a big slab of rock with the words engraved on it, we refuse to be enemies. So I keep coming back to the why. When a country repeatedly violates human rights and does not respond to decades of pressure through diplomatic efforts and international law or rulings, the logic would be that another level of pressure is needed, right? BDS, Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions, is a clear, organized, nonviolent movement to resist discrimination and an illegal occupation. Free speech is in jeopardy under the Trump administration. If the Israel Anti-Boycott Act is passed, it would have chilling implications not only for supporters of Palestine, but also for anyone who cares about the right to dissent in the Trump era. So while I'm not asking for your endorsement of boycott, divestment, and sanctions, I am asking City Council to pass a resolution opposing the Israel Anti-Boycott Act and support the right to boycott. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, Rod, I think, is up next. Is that correct, sir? Correct. Uh, my name is Rod Such, and I'm with Occupation Free Portland. I want to point out that there is substantial community and political opposition to the Israel Anti-Boycott Act in Portland and throughout Oregon. Our political leaders, Senator Merkley, Representatives Blumenauer and DeFazio, and the Multnomah County Democratic Party, have all gone on record opposing the Israel Anti-Boycott Act as currently written. Faith leaders oppose it. More than 35 Portland faith leaders have signed an open letter opposing anti-BDS legislation. Nationally, the leaders of 17 Christian denominations that support BDS have signed a statement opposing the Israel Anti-Boycott Act. Legal organizations oppose it, including the American Civil Liberties Union, the Center for Constitutional Rights, the National Lawyers Guild, and Palestine Legal. National organizations with chapters in Portland oppose it, including Jewish Voice for Peace, J Street, and Move On. Our opposition is based on the knowledge that the right to boycott is a key democratic right for those seeking justice using nonviolent means. In particular, it is a response to a call from Palestinian civil society urging BDS as a way to achieve their fundamental human rights. This is a call that thousands of Portlanders of conscience feel it is imperative to heed. Just as Portlanders did in the 1980s to help end apartheid in South Africa. The Israel Anti-Boycott Act is an attempt to undermine a database created by the United Nations Human Rights Council listing corporations that are complicit in Israel's illegal occupation and violations of human rights and international law. A similar database helped end South African apartheid. It should come as no surprise that those who deny democratic rights for Palestinians will also try to deny democratic rights for U.S. citizens. They are trying to extend the same features of the Israeli occupation to the United States. We are urging you as counselors to lend your moral voice in opposition to any legislation that would revoke First Amendment protections, knowing that if our rights are denied, it is only a matter of time, especially under the Trump administration, before other people struggling for equal rights are also denied their free speech. We must reach the point in this country where the First Amendment and the Bill of Rights are not considered divisive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Carol. Very good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Shepard. Um, I'm filling in for Carol Landsman, who was not able to come. Um, I am, uh, I support very strongly what the other people have said, and uh, as, as uh, David pointed out, and Maria and Rod, 
Um, but I want to especially uh, emphasize my support for the right to boycott, um, and uh, I and mainly because I come from. I just recently <clears throat> read a, a post from the American Friends Service Committee that they are on that list, uh, blacklist, and uh, which seems ridiculous to me because they they have a long history over a hundred years of supporting peace and justice in a non-violent uh, manner. They are very anti-war. And uh, I know that from personal experience because my ancestry is uh, mainly Quaker, although I'm not Quaker, but my sister is. And um, I found out from reading that recent notice from AFSC uh, that um, uh, the, uh, they exercised an anti, uh, I mean a boycott against, uh, it was called um, a free food, free produce movement before the Civil War uh, to support or to boycott against food that was uh, produced by slave labor. And uh, uh, there are also many other instances of, uh, of nonviolent uh, uh, protest that the Quakers and others have have uh, uh, exercised as, as they, uh, the previous speakers uh, spoke about. So, uh, and I have also uh, been following the um, <clears throat> Palestinian uh, efforts to uh, to resist the occupation, and uh, they every, really the only. Uh, Opportunity they have to protest is nonviolent because, and even that is opposed by the Israeli, uh, the Israeli government. So um, I'm very strongly in alliance with the JVP and with other faith institutions. So thank you. Thank you very much, and Olivia. I guess you're the the wrap up. Is that right? My name is Olivia Catby Smith, uh, and I'm a member of Occupation Free Portland and the Democratic Socialists of America. In DSA, we have over 32,000 members nationwide. If the authors of the Israel Anti Boycott Act had their way, all 32,000 of us, with nearly 700 of us here in Portland, would be penalized, criminalized, imprisoned because of our organization's support for the nonviolent boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. Historically, the tactic of boycotting has resulted in huge civil rights victories, and divestments and sanctions are important tools of nonviolence that can effectively put pressure on powerful actors. You yourselves recognize that when you voted to divest from all corporate securities. Pushing the Israel Anti-Boycott Act is a top priority for APAC, an organization that proudly hosted Donald Trump as their conference headliner. The Jeff Sessions Justice Department, under the command of the Trump administration, is all too eager to silence activists who stand in the way of their racist, fascist mission. We have already seen the fates narrowly avoided by activists and journalists who were present at protests on J20 in DC last year. Threats like the Israel Anti-Boycott Act need to be taken seriously. The city of Portland has done a lot in the past year to combat hate. You say you stand with immigrants and refugees and Muslims. I would hope that would extend to the Arabs and Muslims in Portland who are Palestinian, who lived under unimaginable conditions, whose homes were taken from them, <clears throat> or whose ancestors were driven out, and all of their supporters. Portland likes to call itself a progressive city. I would like for you to prove it and show us, even if symbolically, that you refuse to join the ranks of the Trump administration by staying silent on this abhorrent legislation. By staying silent, you become complicit. Very good. 